I think that this will address both big and small companies. And academia and industry has an incredibly important role to work together to find new ways to use this recyclable and really sustainable material that we can do things with for the future. And I really hope that we will be able to continue to develop technically and industrially what we are all uh, working with on a continuous basis. Of course, the most dominant spinning technique is the wet spinning technique, and it is in commercial use uh, for the cupramonium process and the viscous process, but also for new developments, uh, for example, cellulose carbamate and uh, a variety of different spinning technologies using diluted sodium hydroxide as a cellulose solvent, like tree to textile, biosilsol, but also spin over, they use a pop suspension for wet spinning. And last but not least, dry jet wet spinning. It was adopted by the lyocell process, and the lyocell process uh, is connected to the use of a so-called direct cellulose solvent. And there, the spinning dope passes uh, the air gap, you see that here, and thereby um, a, a strong stretching is possible, which leads to a high orientation of the cellulose molecules parallel to their molecular axis, which is a prerequisite for strong and powerful fibers. Um, it's predicted that 23% of the global value of uh, the textiles will basically given a second life, which does not look very much, and mostly achieved through resale and rental, not uh, due to recycling in that sense. But still, even this share of 23% represents a value of 700 billion US dollars, and what is even more important, uh, a decrease in uh, greenhouse gas emissions of 340 million tons. Uh, nevertheless, we have at uh, the upper uh, part uh, the spinneret where uh, the shearing stress dominates. We heard it uh, also from the lecture of Herbert. And afterwards, we have this air gap. And uh, in this air gap, deformation is more relevant. All polyester used in our products will, by 2025, be 100% recycled. Uh, all wood used in our products and packaging will be made from FSC certified materials or fibers from alternative sources such as agricultural residues or post-consumer textiles. And that translates into a lot of legislative initi initiatives across different sectors, across different activities. And textiles obviously gets into the picture. You know the saying, textiles is the third, fourth most polluting sector. Uh, but I think there is a great potential for um, wood-based uh, fibers in the, as part of this, um, of this strategy. Co-funded, or the main uh, financer was uh, Teket, today known as Business Finland. Our own in-house research began a few years later, in 2030, roughly. We can debate that with my colleagues, but this is what I've used in this slide. And we have been pushing forward since 2013. One critical thing was to invite Itochfu to the project, our own project, because as I mentioned, in those days we had no understanding of the market. We needed somebody who can say if the product is good, who would pay something for this, to what direction should we develop it, and so on. And we went to this Japanese company who has been in the textile market for over 100 years. And this is a very happy milestone as well. In the midst of the pandemic, when we made the first so-called bail in, uh, comprising of the product, and you can see all people s signing the, the bail. So when my colleagues, especially in the academia, our president and our dean asks what are the development phases, Yes, we start and in two years we, we know everything what we should know within the pilot plant. Another two years we know everything from a demonstration plant. And in five years we have the first commercial plant. Bullshit. 
But actually, in the beginning, there was, uh, I would call it, lag time when we were trying to understand what we are actually doing. And it was only in summer in 2017 when we actually found those solvents what are being applied now. And it's actually after that the development has been fairly fast. Mm -hmm.